Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video, and today we're going to be doing a review of the FXT Venus T81. Now this is a little micro camera, so if we just take a look at what you get with it, you just get this sort of um, JST power plug if you're interested in using that. Little camera mount, just have a quick spec sheet right here that tells you all the settings and what it can do. No actual manual with this guy. Comes in this little plastic um, case here. And then we have our screws and spacers to mount it in a quad. And then we have our bag with the breakout wiring to hook it up. So for the camera itself, obviously it is the micro form factor. If you just compare it to something like a Foxier micro, it actually is, if we line up the boards, a little bit shorter. The lens is there, um, but the lens itself is quite a bit um, wider, almost like a run cam lens. And it looks like it's a little bit... Um, thinner as well. So this is I guess maybe a nano camera actually is really small This thing is smaller than I expected right there. So we took a look at the back We have 5 to 36 volts input ground and video and then your OSD and power And I believe power is like a V sense on the um, Foxier to get your um, voltage OSD on the screen And now this is a 16 by 9 aspect ratio camera and it is 800 TVL CMOS. So it's something a little more similar to say like the Runcam Micro Sparrow than the um, Foxier Micro Arrow because the Foxier is a CCD and 4.3 and the Sparrow is a CMOS 16.9. So this will be interesting to see how this compares as well to the Foxier Micro Predator which is currently my favorite camera and that is a 800 TVL CMOS 4.3 camera so this is just a different aspect ratio however it does say that it can switch right there so we'll have to see whether it's 4.3 or 16 by 9 native because it's going to crop one of them but it's probably 16 by 9 native so let me get this installed into a quad and we'll see what kind of footage we get from it. All right, so here we have the camera installed into a quad. You can see I just tucked it up front in my Mode 2 Ghost with the pod on it. And I just swapped it out for a Foxier Micro Predator that I had in there before that. And like I mentioned, this um, camera is actually a little bit smaller. It's 16 millimeters wide versus 19 millimeters, which is a standard micro size. Um, however, it did come with the um, little nuts to sort of adapt to the size. So I just put them underneath there. And it also had longer screws, so I was able to mount it just fine. And it tucks away in there nicely. And it's also convenient that it uses the same exact breakout cable that the Foxier camera uses in terms of pinout. So I was able to plug it straight in and everything worked just fine like that. So let me show you some DVR footage. Alright, so first up, this is the fully stock settings on sort of a sunset day. And hopefully right away you can just tell about how completely blown out the image is. Um, if just looking into the sun here, it just completely takes up the sky. I can barely see the gates here. And, you know, it was just really hard to fly. I was really used to the course at this point. Um, it was very late in the day. It was about 30 mile an hour winds, so it was kind of hard to fly. That's why I'm missing some of the gates. But in terms of the camera performance, I was definitely really disappointed in this, especially coming from the Micro Predator. We can just see how blown out this white gate is right here. When it's looking away from the sun, it's not that bad, but as soon as you turn around, it just goes. And then I hit a branch, destroyed a prop since it was cold, and ejected a battery there. All right, and then just to prove that it's not me going against the camera with the lighting conditions, here is footage from the Micro Predator. You can see just how much better the dynamic range is on the Predator here. It can actually see stuff without it being completely blown out. So it's this is the same time of day filming, so it's not like I was putting it against the camera. Here, um, taking it home the next day, I was just went going through the settings to see if maybe the dynamic range was turned off. Um, but there was no dynamic range setting. There was a BLC um, right here. However, that didn't, um, I had that, it's already on. I lowered the exposure to one point. The max is 17. I assume the min is zero. So I lowered that one point and turned the saturation up a bit. But there's really not that many settings you can change in the camera here. And since mine didn't come with an OSD controller, I just used one from a Foxier camera. And here I'm changing the aspect ratio back and forth. It is 16 by 9 native. You can tell by the um, stretching that it does when you go to 4.3, the horizontal stretching. Um, the DVR recorded in 4.3 though, and also change it to NTSC. So I tried it again a little bit later, a little bit darker at home here, just to try and give it another shot. 
and it's not as bad as when it was super sunny, um, but it's definitely still exhibiting the same um, negative char characteristics of being blown out um, when it gets challenged with harsh lighting conditions. Obviously, it's not that bad right here, but when you compare it to other cameras, I don't really see too much point for it. But it definitely is performing better now in lower light cloudy conditions than high light sunset conditions. It looks to me like the lens might be actually a little bit out of focus. Stuff seemed just a little bit fuzzy, especially for an 800 TVL camera, just like the Predator is, I was usually used to a little more resolution. Um, and here I tried it again yet even later since it seemed to work better with lower light. And here it's pretty much almost pitch black out at this point, so it's actually not doing too bad. You can see it's almost going to black and white here for the nighttime, um, but it's, again, it's not great. It's not terrible, but it Definitely, I don't see much point to it considering that it's a $30 camera at this point. You can get a Micro Aero Pro for $20 or a Micro Predator for $37. So I'm not quite sure where this camera fits in. Alright, so here we are back after showing you that DVR footage there. And if you couldn't tell from the footage and my uh, voiceover of that, I'm just really not impressed with this camera at all. Especially in the direct sunlight, it was just extremely blown out. And I was wondering, well, maybe the settings are wrong, maybe it was my fault. Um, I tried, I looked through the settings, there wasn't really much to change. I tried it on a different day and it still exhibited the same problems. And I thought, well, maybe just my camera is messed up, maybe I have a bad one. I checked other videos and they pretty much all look this like the same type of image so it's just how this camera performs and in my opinion I don't really know where this camera fits in because it's not like it's a super cheap $7 camera this is a $28 camera and there's lots of cheaper cameras that in my opinion perform much much better like a standard Foxier Micro Aero um, Pro this is only $20 CCD camera and it performs really, really nice. Pretty much the standard in $20 cheap cameras, if you ask me. And then on the upper end, you have something like a Foxier Micro Predator or the Runcam um, Micro Eagle. Those are very nice 800 TVL CMOS cameras, just like the Venus one. However, they don't completely blow out everything. The Predator is known for having pretty much the best wide dynamic range of any camera. So it's kind of interesting to see a camera with the same specs have pretty much the worst wide dynamic range that I've ever seen. So it really goes to show that there's a lot going on behind the scenes in the firmware rather than just the specs of things. So that's going to bring us to the end of the video. There will be a link down below to the camera if you're interested. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.